155 part 1 of our constitution I prepared and present to Parliament on behalf of His Excellency the President estimates of revenue and expenditure for the financial 2023 stroke 2024. Parliament on third day, 18th of May 2023, approved this budget. My statement today highlights the budget as appropriated by this parliament. Madam Speaker, His Excellency the President declared the 2021-2026 term exanja for social economic transformation. While opening this 11th parliament on the 24th of May 2021, the President said, and I quote, now that we have laid the foundation by building roads, hospitals, schools, water sources, and other public services, the focus should be turned to creating wealth, jobs, and incomes. Close the quote. This addresses the 39% of Ugandans that are still in the non-money economy. Madam Speaker, the NRM government has laid a strong foundation to accelerate the economic social transformation for all Ugandans. The budget for next financial year 23-24, therefore, has been prepared to advance this strategic mission. Consequently, the theme of the budget has been retained as full modernization of Uganda's economy through commercial agriculture, industrialization, expanding and broadening services, digital transformation, and market access. Madam Speaker, in my statement, I will address the following. One, performance of the economy during the financial year 22-23, as well as our future economic prospects. Two, accountability for the financial year 22-23 budget. Three, financial year 23-24 budget priorities interventions. And four, the financing strategy for financial year 23-24 budget. The recent economic performance. Madam Speaker, Uganda's economy has remained resilient and is on, the straight, on, on a steady recovery path. Yes. You want me to repeat it? <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I will repeat it at an appropriate time. The economy this year is projected to have grown by 5.5% compared to 4.6% last year. This year's performance compares favorably with the average growth rate for Sub-Saharan Africa estimated at 3.6% for calendar year 2023. The size of the economy is estimated at 184.3 trillion compared to shillings 162.9 trillion last year. This is equivalent to US dollars 49.4 billion compared to US dollars 45.6 billion last year. This expansion is on account of good performance of the services sector, which grew at 6.2% compared to 4.1% in the previous year. Agriculture has also performed very strongly, growing by 5%, despite the dry spell in the first quarter of this financial year. In particular, food crops, livestock, and fishing performed very well. Industry grew at 3.9%, driven largely by manufacturing and construction activities, especially in the oil and the gas industry. Inflation and, rates, and interest rates. Madam Speaker, inflation is reducing steadily on account of well-coordinated fiscal and monetary policy. Inflation has significantly decreased since October 2022, when it peaked 
at 10.7%. Last month, the pace at which prices were rising slowed down to 6.2%. Prices of key items such as soap, sugar, fuel at pumps, among others, have significantly reduced. With respect to the cost of money, commercial bank lending interest rates have increased slightly to 19.3% in April 2023 from 18.8% in April 2021. This mainly caused the increase in the central bank rates of 10% since October 2022 in order to fight inflation. To reduce the cost of money for the private sector, government has taken a deliberate policy to reduce domestic borrowing, which is a major driver of commercial bank lending rates. In addition, government has also provided long-term and affordable capital through the Uganda Development Bank, MUOGA, the Agricultural Credit Facility, and the Small Business Recovery Fund to the large, medium, and small, small and, and microfinance, no, micro uh, enterprises. A total of shillings, 2.7 trillion, has been provided to date. Private sector credit. Madam Speaker, despite the increase in the interest rates, total private sector credit increased from 19.5 trillion in May 2022 to shillings, 20.5 trillion in April 2023 representing an annual growth of 4.8. The growth in lending to industry and agriculture was 6.2 and 3.3, respectively. Trade and personal lending recorded an annual, uh, uh, recorded annual growth of 14.1% and 19.1%, respectively, in the same period. This underscores the ongoing government intervention to ensure that agriculture and industry access adequate and affordable financing on a sustainable basis. Now I turn to the exchange rate. Madam Speaker, the Uganda shillings has remained stable against major global currencies despite the strengthening of the US dollar. Between April 2022 and April 2023, the Uganda shilling depreciated by 5.8% against the US dollar, compared to an average depreciation rate of 8% within, within the East African region. Let me repeat this. The Uganda shilling, the Uganda shilling has remained stable against major global currencies despite the strengthening of the U.S. dollar. Between April 2022 and April 2023, the Uganda shilling depreciated by 5.8 against the U.S. dollar compared to an average of depreciation rate of 8% within the East African region. The stability of the exchange rate is due to increase in foreign direct investment in flows into the oil and the gas sector significant recovery in tourism, and the recent good performance of exports. External trade. Madam Speaker, by April 2023, Uganda's exports of merchandise goods amounted to, shilling, to US dollars 4.2 billion compared to US dollars point one, point, sorry, US dollars 3.1 billion over the same period over the previous financial year. This represents a 35.5 percent increase, mainly driven by an increase in exports of gold, coffee, fish, sugar, beans, maize, and light manufactured products to the regional market. The NRM government has provided, has provided support through different initiatives to boost exports. These include the provision of long-term and affordable capital, investment in transport infrastructure, and energy in particular, plus building industrial parks. These efforts started, have started yielding results. The manufactured exports have emerged 
as a major contributor to merchandise exports. For example, in year 2022, Uganda exported sugar worth of $163 million, cement worth US dollars 87 million, plastics, or plastics worth uh, 61 million, million US dollars, soap uh, 31 US dollars million, and beer worth uh, US dollars 29 million. There were no exports of any of these items as recently as 2006. Thank you very much, but I needed to hear it louder so that uh, this coming financial year we work harder like horses. At a regional level, By April 2023, we have recorded a trade surplus, surplus with our East African community trade, trading partners of shillings 1 billion, no, of US dollars 1 billion. Tanzania remains the only East African trading partner where we recorded a bilateral trade deficit of US dollars 154 million. Our trade balance will be strengthened further as we continue to boost exports and enhance domestic manufacturing capacity to replace some imports. Now, foreign direct investment and remittances and tourism. Madam Speaker, foreign direct investment inflows to Uganda amounted to, to East US dollars 1.4 no, 1.5 billion by April 2023. Work as remittances increased to US dollars 1.3 billion in the calendar year 2022 compared to US dollars 1.1 uh, billion the previous year. This helps to finance our foreign exchange requirements such as imports and debt servicing. Tourism revenue increased to US dollars 847.8 million by April 2023 from 777.8 million in the same period a year ago. Employment. Madam Speaker, the November 2022 National Labor Force Survey puts the size of the labor force at 23.5 million people. Out of these, 10 million were employed, representing only 42% employment rate. Another 8.2 million, equivalent to 35%, were engaged in subsistence agriculture, and nine out of every 10 employed Ugandans were working in the informal sector. Close to 380,000 employment opportunities have been created under the Presidential Initiative on Wealth and Job Creation, but we still need more. Now, Emioga, Madam Speaker, the target of government is to create over 2.5 million jobs in the next five years. This will be achieved by effectively implementing the partial development model industrialization, wealth creation, and full monetization of the economy. I will elaborate how we will implement this initiative later. Now, fiscal performance. Madam Speaker, the fiscal deficit is estimated at 5.1 percent of the, DG, the, of the DG, GDP this financial year, lower than 7.4 percent last financial year. This is due to reduction in both recurrent and development expenditure increased grants. The fiscal deficit has been financed through domestic borrowing and external loans. Total domestic revenue collections amounted to shillings 21.7 trillion by May this year and are projected to be 25.6 trillion by close of this financial year, which is just 
a few weeks away. The total domestic revenue is equivalent to 13.9% per, it is equivalent to 13 of GDP and it covers 68 of the total expenditure, including interest payments on our public date, but excluding the principal repayment of both external and the domestic date. Economic growth strategy and outlook. Madam Speaker, the economic growth strategy underlying the budget for the next financial year and, and medium term includes the following. One, increase domestic revenue mobilization and a reduction in non-concession borrowing to ensure date sustainability. Two, effective implementation of the parish development model and the, Mo and the MIOGA initiatives. Three, effective implementation of the various export strategies and enhancing access to global and regional markets. Four, support for the private sector by reducing the cost of doing business through, one, construction of the standard gauge railway and the rehabilitation of the meter gauge railway. Two, development of small scale solar powered irrigation schemes to address climate change and ensure our food security. Three, maintenance of both tarmac and marm roads. Four, continued investment in industrial parks and energy transmission lines. Provision of affordable credit for micro and small enterprises and lower income groups through the Small Business Recovery Fund, EMIOGA and Microfinance Support Center, and funding for the medium to large enterprise through the Uganda Development Bank. Pro four, no, six. Provision of equality, equality uh, for it, provision of quality seedlings, pesticides, fertilizers, storage, and marketing in the agro and isolation value chain in order to increase agricultural production and productivity. Seven. Rapid development of oil and gas production, specifically the construction of the East African crude oil pipeline and the national oil refinery. Eight, expansion of our skilled labor force to meet the demand of a diversified economy, especially industrial skills. Nine, mitigation of the negative impact of climate change on the economy and our livelihoods. Ten, implementation of the Greater Kampala Metropolitan Infrastructure Development Master Plan. And eleven, maintain maintenance of peace and the security of persons and the property are the bedrock on which the above are best for. Peace, security, freedom. Madam Speaker, as a result of these interventions, Uganda's economy is projected to grow at 6% in financial year 23-24. Can I repeat the other thing? You see what I was telling you? Over the next five years, the economy is projected to grow at an average of 6.5% to 7% per year. These things are not common everywhere. <laughs> Financial year 23-24 budget priorities. Madam Speaker, the budget for next financial year is aimed at achieving the following broad objectives. One, urgent completion of key public investments with higher multiplier effects on the attainment of NDP3 targets and the NRM 2021-2026 manifesto. Two, enhance revenue mobilization and collections. Three, full-scale operationalization of the parish development model. And four, enhance government efficiency and effectiveness through rationalization of public expenditure and then the payroll and the audit and so forth. Payroll audit and so forth. The key priorities funded to achieve these objectives are 
the following. One, boosting household incomes and micro and micro enterprises. Two, commercializing agriculture to enhance production and, product, and productivity and improve competitiveness of agricultural products. Three, supporting private sector growth. Four, investing in the people of Uganda. And I emphasize that one, investing in the people of Uganda. Five, improving the stock and the quality of infrastructure. Six, expediting implementation of strategic interventions in innovation, research and development, and the mineral, oil, and the gas industry. Madam Speaker, in order to effectively implement these strategic priorities, the government shall ensure peace and security, good governance, the rule of law, as the bedrock for economic activities. I now turn to detail the key actions we will be undertaking in these strategic priorities. Boosting household incomes and micro enterprises. Madam Speaker, the parish development model will boost household incomes as well as development of micro enterprises. Since the launch of the PDM in February 2022, a total of shillings 590.2 billion has been disbursed to all the 10,459 to all the 10,459 parishes nationwide, translating into shillings 50 million per parish. The balance will be disbursed by end of this month. Next financial year, the parish development model has been allocated 1.1 trillion Uganda shillings. The MUGA initiative will further boost household incomes and microfinance and also micro enterprises at parish and sub county levels by directly funding parish and sub county enterprise groups. By March 2023, city capital worth shillings 494 billion had been disbursed to 6,721 constituency based in Mioga circles. Over 600,000 individuals had successfully applied for credit from their parish based associations. Nearly half, 46% of these were women. Women are very persistent, I can tell you. And when they say they do something, they will do it. Youth, 25%, and the PWDs, 4%. These circles have also mobilized savings of shilling 78 billion and a further shilling 80 billion recovered from the loans given to the beneficiaries. Now, somebody said the Mioga is, no, is, 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 is non performing. Uh, he does not know what he's talk, talking about. And I really am sorry for that type of person. This demonstration demonstrates the sustainability of the, the Mioga initiative. Next financial year, shillings 100 billion has been allocated to the Mioga initiative. Madam Speaker, in order to grow local enterprises, 19 skilling centers have been established across the country under the Presidential Industrial Hubs Initiative. So far, 28,750 trainee trainees have successfully completed training in skills programs and 6,110 are undergoing training in various fields. Our Lady of Fatima Catholic Church in Akurabie, Luzira Prisons, Subway Crystal Towers, Wabigalo Parish Community, Butikiwa, Kigowa, Ntinda, and, 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 and Community Hall. 
This support will continue over the medium term. Madam Speaker, shilling 60 billion has been allocated for skilling the youth in the next financial year. Commercializing agriculture. Madam Speaker, during this financial additional funding amounting shillings 110 billion was provided for food security interventions in government institutions with the farms, including the UPDF, Uganda Prisons, Minister of Agriculture, the National Agricultural Research Organization, and the National Agriculture Genetics Resources Center and the Data Bank. The priority actions to commercialize the agriculture next financial year will include the following. One, support agricultural research for the development of climate resilient crops and animal species. Two, promote environmental conservation, restoration and protection of degraded water catchment areas and forest covers. Three, construct small, medium and large scale irrigation schemes in water stressed areas. This will include the construction of earth dams at Unyama in Guru, Namaru in Kapiripirit, Sipi in Bramburi, Kabuyanda in Singoro, in Singo, sorry, in Singro, among others. Implement large scale mechanization and irrigation and improve farmer mobilization, education, and partnership with large commercial farmers for the production of strategic commodities such as coffee, maize, and tea to meet national and international demand. Madam Speaker, shillings 2.2 trillion has been allocated for food security, irrigation, climate change mitigation, value chain development, agricultural research, and disease control, among others. Supporting private sector growth. Madam Speaker, the private sector has been directly supported through industrial parks development, promoting small and medium enterprises, and facilitating tourism. Industrial development and investment. Eight government-owned industrial parks are, are currently operational. These are, these are Namanve, Jinja, Bweyogerere, Mbale, Soroti, Mbarara, Kasese, and Ruzira. In addition, there are three industrial parks developed under the public-private partnership arrangement at Kapeka, Mukono, and Buikwe. Uganda Investment Authority has acquired 12 square miles for industrial development provided by various local governments in the 18 zones across our country. Uganda's global reputation as an investment destination has been boosted significantly in the recent past. Uganda has been named the number one investment destination in East Africa by the AIM Global 2023 Abdubai. In addition, our country has been ranked among the top 10 African countries for the, best, for the best investment destination in Africa by the African Development Bank. It is now also ranked first in East Africa for capital market growth by Abusa Bank. We are moving. Small and medium enterprises. Madam Speaker, these SMEs in manufacturing and export sectors will be supported by US dollars, $20 million, from the from World Bank Investment for Industrial Transformation and Employment Project, which we abbreviate as INVITE, that will provide grants and a concession credit to qualify uh, to qualifying SMEs. These SMEs will access new and innovative financing products with long term financing of up to 15 years. This intervention aims at increasing Uganda's manufactured export products, generate direct and indirect jobs for more than 200,000 workers, and safeguard existing jobs for 530,000 uh, workers. Madam Speaker, an allocation of shillings 209.3 billion has been provided through the invite project for next financial year. 
na waitani to tourism. Uganda has increasingly been recognized as a tourism destination and is ranked by CNN as one of the top 10 best tourist destinations in the world. Nkademu, Uganda has increasingly been recognized as a tourism destination and is ranked by CNN as one of the top best tourism destination in the world. We will continue to promote domestic and inbound tourism, including the use of digital platforms. Uganda will also be marketed as a global and regional center for meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. Hospitality standards will be enforced through licensing, grading, and classification of tourism facilities. Shillings 249 billion has been allocated for the promotion of our tourism business. Madam Speaker, all the private sector interventions I have detailed above have been allocated shillings 2.4 trillion. Now investing in people. Madam Speaker, Uganda has registered visible improvements in healthcare outcomes, access to knowledge, and a decent standard of living. On average, a Ugandan now lives longer at 64 years, up from 53 years, just as recently as 2015. The Ugandan attends more years of schooling and enjoys a higher income per capita than ever before. Let me repeat this, because it is interesting, especially to me, who is working day and night to make sure that the, the youth and the, the, and, and the sick are helped to, to, to recover. Uganda has registered a visible improvement in healthcare outcomes, access to knowledge, and a decent standard of living. On average, a Uganda now lives longer, 64 years, up from 50 years, 53 years, just as recently as 2015. Attains more years of schooling and enjoys a higher income per capita than ever before. Now we turn to health. Access to health care by Ugandans remains a key priority of this government. Consequently, 381 health center tools have been upgraded to health center threes. Honorable Jane, you will confirm that one. In addition, 250,000 health center threes have been upgraded to health center, health center four and equipped and are now functional, largely supported by the Uganda Inter Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer Program, which we abbreviate as UGFIT which is co-funded by the World Bank. Construction and equipping of 31 new health center threes in sub-counties without any health facility is now at 90% complete. The health referral system has also been enhanced by fully functioning 143 intensive care units and five high dependency units in national, region, and regional referral hospitals across our country. Next year, the Murago, the Murago Super Specialized Hospital and the new state-of-the-art intensive care unit at Uganda Cancer Institute will be fully operationalized. They will provide specialized care to all Ugandans and reduce medical referrals abroad. In addition, all existing health center fours and health center threes will be facilitated to offer quality health care to all Ugandans. In this respect, health worker supervision and management will be strengthened to reduce absenteeism. After the ongoing audit of the payroll, the ban on health worker recruitment will be lifted. Let me repeat this. After the ongoing audit of the payroll, the ban 
on health worker recruitment will be lifted. Government in the next few weeks resolves the plight of the medical interns and doctors designated as senior house officers in view of their important role in supporting the health care system. Government, we in the next few weeks resolve the plight of medical interns and doctors designated as senior house officers in view of their important role in supporting the healthcare system. So please interns, come down. We are coming to rescue you. In the meantime, I have provided shillings 22 billion to clear outstanding areas for medical interns and senior house officers for the financial ending June this year. Education. Madam Speaker, we have registered significant progress in accessing to education. Uganda's literacy rate improved from 70.2% in 2012 to 79% in 2021. Education enrollment in public schools is now at 8.4 million children in primary school and at 833 pupils in secondary and 174,000 students in tertiary institutions. The question we must raise, these children were 8.8 .8 in primary, now in, in secondary there are only 83300. Where did the balance go? To improve delivery of the recently launched curriculum, 3,100 teachers were trained and inspection of learning institutions was enhanced using the inspection system. The teacher effectiveness and learner's achievement system has helped to reduce teacher absenteeism and improved pupil attendance. The education management information system has been revamped to support data management and decision making in education. To enhance sports development, talent identification, nurturing and professional development have been emphasized. Madam Speaker, the mountains of the Moon University was operationalized during this year. Upgrading of the facilities was completed at Uganda Technical College in Lira, Ergon, and Bushen. Next year, the construction and equipping of two unit laboratories in 21 second schools currently without any will commence in line with the science, technology, engineering, mathematics policy. Government will continue with the construction of 115 city secondary schools in sub counties without any under the Uganda Intergovernment Fiscal Transfer Program. Madam Speaker, after the ongoing audit of the government payroll, the ban on recruitment will also be lifted to cover the staffing gaps in education. Madam Speaker, government will continue to support sports activities and, and entertainment talents and enforce copyrights for performing artists. Safe water. Madam Speaker, the national water coverage for safe and clean water for human consumption now stands at 70%, with 67% in rural areas and 72% in urban areas. But we still need more. In rural, in, rural, in rural areas, graft flow schemes have been completed at Lirima in Manafa, Lukaru, Kabasanda in Utambara, and Nyawiche, Kichenke in Ibanda. Pipe to water systems have also been constructed at Nyakibingo in Rukungiri, Kabuyanda in Isingiro, and Orom water supply system in Kitugum Ramo. In addition, 40 solar powered mini piped schemes serving 173 persons have been constructed across 15 least served districts, including Liantonde, Sembabule, Yumbe, Rakai, 
Buyende, Kamuli, and Kakumiro. In urban areas, nine piped water supply and sanitation systems have been completed in Dokolo, Padibe, Lamo, Udramachaku, Arua, Kagadi, Morulem, Alerek, Abim, and Kambuga II in Kanungu. Madam Speaker, access to safe and clean water will be enhanced to achieve 85% coverage in rural areas and 100% average in urban areas by the year 2025. Next year, the main activities toward this goal include construction of 1,540 boreholes in 1,050 villages and town wards, building 49 large and 67 medium and 80 small pipe to water schemes in both urban and rural areas, and the rehabilitation and maintenance of 50 water systems in growth centers. Interventions that build human capital have been loca allocated 9.6 trillion. In addition, the government together with the World Bank are implementing shilling uh, US dollars, 50, 500 million, Uganda, uh, uh, in Uganda, through the Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer Program to construct health centers three and four and seed secondary schools and microscale irrigation facilities in local governments that do not have these facilities, as I've said above. Enhancing infrastructure stock and quality. Madam Speaker, the stop and the quality of the stock and the quality of infrastructure is a key enabler for economic growth, development, and social transformation. Transport infrastructure. Transport infrastructure development has been a major hallmark of Uganda's recent economic development. The road sector in 1986 totaled 97,100 kilometers. Today, it has expanded 24 to almost 160,000 kilometers, while only 6,700 kilometers of today's road network is paved. The road network now allows access to even the, remote, the remotest part of Uganda. Next financial year, we will substantially complete 16 national road projects, including Atia, Kalaropi, Moroto, Lokitanyala, uh, Kawuku, Werenga, Namugonde, Bugiri, Nsambia, Mukwano, the Kampala Flyover, and the Shere Town, Kiamate Access Roads. In addition, priority will be accorded to maintenance of existing road network, both national and the district urban and the community access roads. The Bukungu, Kagwara, Kabera Maido Ferry, and related landing sites, and Lake Bunyonyi Ferries, and their landing sites will also be completed. Madam Speaker, emergency repairs of the Kampala Malaba Meter Gauge Railway was completed this year. Emergency repairs. Let me repeat. Madam Speaker, emergency repairs of the Kampara, Malaba, Mita Gage Railway has, com has completed this year. The full... Uh-huh. My team, please, you'll have to come and explain this. The full rehabilitation of the Kampala, Malaba, and Tororo Guru meter gauge railway will commence next financial year. 49 of the right of way for Kampala, Malaba standard gauge railway has been acquired. The construction of Maraba Kampala Standard Gauge Railway will commence next financial year, for which shillings 535 billion has been provided. Madam Speaker, in the air transport sector, the redevelopment of and expansion of Entebbe International Airport is at 85% complete and is due to be completed by July 2024. 
the construction of Kabarega International Airport now stands at 91.7% and will be completed by September 2023. We shall also rehabilitate and upgrade the following airdromes that are under feasibility studies. Kidepo, Pakuba, Mbarara, Guru, Arua, Kisoro, and Kasese. Madam Speaker, an allocation of shillings 4.5 trillion, representing 13.3% per, of the total budget, has been budgeted for road maintenance, construction, railway development, and rehabilitation, water, and air transport development. Of particular significance, an allocation of shillings 1 billion has been provided to each district, city, and municipality for, for road grading, maram, and compacting. In total, shillings 176 billion has been allocated for this purpose. We have also secured US dollars, 608.7 million dollars, equivalent to shillings 2.25 trillion to address flooding, traffic congestion, poor road infrastructure, and signalized injunctions, and uh, unemployment in greater Kampala metropolitan area, covering Kampala, Wakiso Mukono, and in Piki District, and their municipalities. This will upgrade 504 kilometers of roads, including junction signalization, in eight urban authorities, rehabilitation of 30 storm water drainage points, upgrade 23 markets, and construct 25 artisanal parks and industrial work spaces for the small scale manufacturers. Madam Speaker, in collaboration with the World Bank, government is implementing the US dollar 360 million Uganda support to municipal infrastructure development USMID program to improve infrastructure and address operational challenges in the cities and municipal municipalities. Power infrastructure. Power generation, transmission and distribution infrastructure have continued to expand. Generation capacity increased to 1,379.1 megawatt as at March 2023 from 1,343.9 megawatt in March 2022, an increase of 34.4 megawatt, although that is not enough again. With the commissioning of the Karuma Hydropower Project planned for September this year, generation capacity will increase to, sh to 1,100 1, no, no, 1,976 megawatt. The six megawatt Nyagaka two, no, Nyagaka three hydropower project is also due for commissioning by end of this month. In transmission, a total of 417 kilometers of transmission lines were added to the main grid during the year, bringing the total transmission line network now to 4,011 kilometers. To enable evacuation of power from 600 meg uh, megawatt Karuma hydropower project, the 2048-kilometer 20, Karuma Kawanda, the kilometer 55 Karuma Oruyo, and the 76-kilometer Karuma Lira lines have been completed. Next financial year, 761 kilometers of transmission lines and associated power substation will be construction, constructed to improve the stability and reliability of the network. We also build the capacity of the Uganda Electricity Generation and Transmission Companies to manage the generation distribution networks after the expiry of the ESCOM and the Umeme concessions. Madam Speaker, next financial year, 1.3 trillion has been allocated to electricity interventions. Digital transformation, Madam Speaker. Turning to the digital transformation, 4,717 kilometers of optic fiber has been laid across the country. Geographical coverage of broadband services stands at 66%, and 25 broadband sites have been upgraded 
to 3G, providing services to over 700,000 Ugandans. Three Wi-Fi hotspots have been established at nine border posts, namely Ruakaka, Mpondwe, Mutu... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm still very fine. Uh, sorry, he has interrupted me. Three Wi-Fi hotspots have been established at nine border posts, namely uh, Ruakaka, Mpondwe, Mutukura, Busia, Vura, Katuna, and Eregu. Next year, Wi-Fi will be deployed to 820 locations targeting schools, hospitals, markets in selected sub-regions. The Greater Kampala Metropolitan Area Network will be upgraded to monitor service provision over the national backbone infrastructure. We will also dig digitally transform public service delivery by connecting all essential services such as schools, hospitals, tourism sites, and the police to the national backbone. Madam Speaker, an allocation of shillings 192 billion has been provided to accelerate digital transformation. Expediting strategic, strategic in it, in it initiatives. Madam Speaker, the development of oil and the gas, the beneficiation of new roads and investment in science, innovation, and research are key strategic initiatives that will significantly support that social economic transformation. Oil and gas, Madam Speaker, the final investment decision for the development of the East African crude oil pipeline was taken on the 2nd of February, 2022. We are fast-tracking the construction of the East African crude oil pipeline, ECOP, and the national oil refinery. In addition, the right of way for Kavari, Hoima, Buloba, refined product, product pipeline, and the financing for the refinery and associated infrastructure will be concluded. Preparatory work for the development of pre petrochemical industry at the Kabale Petro-Based petro Industrial Park will also be expedited. I have allocated shillings 407, 400, 447 billion to fast track the development of petroleum resources next financial year. Science, innovation, and research. Madam Speaker, government is supporting several innovation and scientific research initiatives that will propel Uganda industry into the high technology, the technology economy. These include vaccine research and development, including therapeutics and uh, diagnostics, to enable Uganda to enter into the pathogenic economy. Three, automotive industry technology development. Four, chipset and robot robotics manufacturing. During this financial year, we enhance the salaries for scientists by shillings 508 billion. We shall continue to support scientists and innovators to undertake the process of intellectual property registration, train and sensitize stakeholders on intellectual, pro intellectual property. We have provided 257 billion to support science, innovation, technology development. Mineral beneficiation. Madam Speaker, in order for Uganda to reap the benefits of mineral resources, Uganda's mineral deposits will be quantified to ascertain their value before beneficiation. We shall also operationalize the recently approved mineral legislation to regulate artisan and small-scale miners for the development of minerals. An allocation of 54.4 billion has been provided. Maintaining security, good governance and rule of law. Madam Speaker, security good governance and the rule of law 
are the bedrock of the success of our social economic interventions. In order to guarantee the security of persons and property, the capacity of security and intelligence agencies will be strengthened to address any security threats and build the national defense capability. In order to enhance good governance, Parliament's legislative and oversight role will be strengthened to ensure proper use of public funds, among others. Madam Speaker, you faulted me on something. I will touch it on when I'm concluding by our not attending parliamentary committees, but they, I, 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 I will comment on that. Furthermore, we will ensure compliance with the rules and regulations in the public financial management and implement Parliament's recommendations on the use of public funds. To improve efficiency and effectiveness of government, we will further automate financial management systems. These include program budgeting system for the budget preparation, monitoring and reporting, the integrated financial management system for budget execution, the human capital management for personnel and payroll management, e-government procurement, e-passport, and the one border posting, among others. Madam Speaker, the integrated bank of projects has recently been relaunched to improve public investment management, including the tracking of project performance. Projects whose implementation has unduly delayed without sound reason will be removed from the public investment plan. Madam Speaker, the rationalization of government agencies will commence in financial year 24-25. In addition, the government has stopped the creation of additional administrative units and agencies. Madam Speaker, to enhance access to justice, the target is to reduce court case backlog by about 6,000 cases by end of June 2024 from the 50,000 outstanding cases. A total of 117 districts already have complete frontline criminal and civil justice service delivery points comprising of a police station, court, prison, prosecution services, and legal aid services, among others. The target is to have 119 districts with justice service delivery points by end of June 20. 24. The construction of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal buildings in Kampala and the Soroti and Rukungiri High Court buildings will be completed. In addition, the High Court buildings in Albetong, Budaka, Liantonde, and the Magistrate Court buildings in Karenga, Patongo, and Abim will also be completed. Madam Speaker, the functions which include enactment of legislation oversight and accountability roles will further be strengthened. In this regard, the construction of parliamentary chambers is ongoing. Madam Speaker, security governance, security, governance, the, the register and the administration of justice have been allocated shillings 9.1 trillion next financial year, up from 8.1 trillion this financial year. Fiscal strategy for financial year 23-24, and the medium term. Madam Speaker, the fiscal strategy for next financial year prioritizes enhancing revenue collection, the rationalization of public expenditure, and ensuring long-term date sustainability. This will reduce reliance on external financing for social economic transformation. Therefore, the fiscal strategy will focus on the following. One, continuing effective implementation of the domestic revenue mobilization strategy. Two, repurposing the national budget to achieve high multiplier effect of government interventions on the economy and improve the efficiency and effectiveness of government programs and projects. Three, mobilization, mobilizing external concession loans and utilizing non-concession loans for projects with high economic and financial returns. Four, limiting domestic borrowing to an average of 2.2% of GDP 
in the short medium term to avoid crowding out the private sector through rising interest rates and five reducing the budget deficit to within a maximum lift of five percent of gdp and gradually converging towards the east african target of a deficit of three percent of gdp next financial year the budget deficit will be reduced to 3.5 of gdp in order to live within our means we have reduced consumptive expenditure during the next financial year there will be no purchase of new vehicles for political leaders and public officers except for hospital ambulances medical supplies and distribution agricultural extension services security and revenue mobilization don't roast me please that's a decision that we took. Travel abroad has also been restricted to statutory functions and for critical legal and source mobilization functions. We will also graduate expenses on workshops and seminars. Madam Speaker, during this year, domestic areas worth shillings 166 billion were settled. Government is committed to paying verified suppliers, court awards, and compensation for ranches. Next financial year, shillings 200 billion has been located to settle domestic areas. Madam Speaker, to improve absorption and utilization of external loans and grants, government has undertaken the following measures. One, acquiring accounting officers of ministries, no, requiring accounting officers of ministries, departments and agencies to provide quote, quarterly physical performance briefs to the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and Office of the Prime Minister on the performance of external finance projects under their jurisdiction. Two, ensuring project selection, design, approval, and analysis is undertaken before the project is approved for funding. Three, providing a dedicated fund for land acquisition and right of way instead of earmarking funds for particular projects to address delays in compensation. Four, commencing project implementation only on sites where there are no rights of way and other physical encumbrances. Five, acquire, requiring all environmental and social safeguards to be enforced by the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development and the National Environmental Management Authority during the project design. Six, enhancing dialogue with the development partners to ensure smooth implementation of externally funded projects. And seven, placing all project coordinators on performance-based, co placing all project coordinators on performance-based contracts to improve accountability for project performance. Domestic revenue mobilization for the financial year we are budgeting for. Madam Speaker, domestic revenues for financial 23-24 are projected to amount to 29.7 trillion, of which 27.4 trillion will be tax revenue and 2.3 trillion will be non-tax revenue. This represents a revenue effort of 14.3 of GDP. We want to go to 18-20 in the immediate future. You look under the domestic revenue mobilization strategy, the objective is to improve revenue collection to between 16 to 18 of GDP over ne the next five years from about 13.5 uh, of GDP currently now. I have said that already. Next financial priority has been placed on improving tax administration, including use of ICT to fight tax evasion and rationalizing tax exemptions to improve their effectiveness and reduce revenue leakage. Madam Speaker, government is undertaking the following tax measures and reforms in tax administration to further improve revenue mobilization. Rationalization of tax exemptions. Madam Speaker, to reduce revenue losses from exemptions, next financial year we shall commence the rationalization of tax exemptions. However, we will continue to provide tax exemption based on the following. One, apply the criteria including minimum requirements for application of any new tax exemptions. Two, 
assess the costs and the benefits of all tax exemptions to ensure adherence to niche show objectives. Three, streamline and clarify the roles and the responsibilities in the governance of tax exemptions. Madam Speaker, the respective provisions of the tax laws that provide the following exemption have been repealed. One, deductions allowed for accelerated wear and tear on plant and machinery, no more depreciation will apply henceforth. Two, exemption on VAT for this diapers, inputs for processing hides and skins into finished leather, and inputs into iron ore, sm smelting into billets. Tax laws amendment. Madam Speaker, the tax laws have been amended to improve the tax system and ensure fairness. Measure, the, these measures have generated 615 billion in addition to revenue next year, equivalent to 3.3 percent of GDP. The amendments are detailed in the respective tax laws approved by Parliament. I will, however, highlight a few of these amendments later on. Income tax. Madam Speaker, the Ta Income Tax Act has been amended to allow taxpayers who obtain credit facilities from circles, non-deposit taking microfinance institutions, self help groups, and community-based microfinance institutions to deduct the entire interest on loans from these institutions as a business expense while determining their taxable income. This is the practice for this is the practice for taxpayers borrowing from commercial banks and microfinance institutions. The objective of this measure is to extend this benefit to borrowers of microfinance institutions and money lenders. This will support low income individuals and groups to enable them to access financial services and improve profitability and the survival rate of the SMEs. Madam Speaker, in addition to withholding tax of 10 percent, sorry, Madam Speaker, in addition, a withholding tax of 10 percent has been imposed on commissions paid to agent bankers to equalize their tax treatment with other agents operating similar businesses, such as mobile money agents. Value added tax. Madam Speaker, the VAT Act has been amended to, one, exempt the supply of concentrates and seed cake from VAT to incentivize local manufacturing of animal feeds and premixes. Two, allow non-resident taxpayers to file returns and pay tax in United States dollars to facilitate compliance of non-resident taxpayers operating in Uganda. Three, require foreign remote providers of electronic goods and services to account for VAT on goods and services sold in Uganda, so as to bring e-commerce transactions into the tax system. In addition, the scope of electronic services on which VAT is applicable has been expanded to include, among others, films, games of chance, advertising platforms, streamlining platforms, cable carb hailing services, cloud storage, and data warehousing. Excise Duty Act Amendment. Madam Speaker, the Excise Duty Act has been amended to remove the excise duty of US dollars 9 cents uh, per, per minute on incoming international calls originating from the United Republic of Tanzania. This will include Tanzania, Tanzania in the one area network comprising the other East African community member states. Phone users in East African community will now be able to make and receive calls at local rates regardless of their location within the one network area. Madam Speaker, the size of intervention, the size of investment capital required for an investor to benefit from excise duty exemption on construction materials has been reduced from shillings, no, from dollars of five million to 50 million for Uganda nationals. Foreign investors will be required to have investment capital of at least 50 million dollars in order to benefit from this exemption. In order to deter undervaluation, excise duty 
on mineral water, bottled water, and other water purposely for drinking has been imposed at 10% or shilling 75 per litre, whichever is higher. The Excise Duty Act has also been amended to clarify the taxation of spirits for human consumption on one hand and the exemption from excise duty of spirits used as raw materials for the production of disinfectants and sanitizers. Tax Procedure Code and um, act Amendment. Madam Speaker, the Tax Procedure Code Act has been amended to waive any interest and penalty on tax areas outstanding as of 30th June 2023 in order to address requests from taxpayers who have cited the hardships caused by the COVID-19 lockdown. This provision is, however, limited to taxpayers who come out and pay by 31st December 2023, where the taxpayer pays part of the principal tax outstanding by the deadline the payment of interest and penalty shall be waived on a prorata basis. After that date, URA will decisively enforce recovery of all taxes and penalties. Ratification of the Convention of the Mutual Administrative Act Assistance in Tax Matters Implementation Act. Madam Speaker, Parliament has enacted a Convention on Mutual Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters Implementation Act 2023. This is to increase cooperation among tax authorities in, in, in participating countries to tackle tax avoidance and cross-border tax evasion. This will assist URA to receive correct information to deter illicit financial transactions where the country is estimated to lose revenue amounting to shillings 300 to 500 billion annually. Taxi administration reforms. Madam Speaker, sustainable revenue collection requires efficiency in the management and administration of the tax system. The following measures will be undertaken. One, strengthening the taxpayer register expansion program framework, which is a collaboration between Uganda Revenue Authority, Uganda Registration Services Bureau, Kampala Capital City Authority, and the Minister of Local Government in revenue collection. This framework targets to improve the environment for business formalization and growth. Two, supporting local governments to enhance their revenue effort, including using electronic systems. Three, undertaking VAT feed audits, complex audits, and strengthening data recovery. Four, leveraging ICT to analyze the data and, and integrating with other government systems to properly identify the taxable transactions and taxpayers. Five, improving taxpayer awareness to know their rights and obligations and enhance stakeholder engagements. Six, continuing, continuing tax ed education and awareness intervention across regions, sectors, and gender. Seven, further strengthening of URA staff compliance to procedures, guidelines, and standards to curb corruption tendencies and, and minimize revenue leakages, including staff deployment in areas with high risk for revenue collection. Eight, utilizing the administrative, uh, the, the alternative dispute resolution mechanism by negotiating with the taxpayers for settlement of tax disputes out of the court, of the court system to avoid delays in the resolution of tax disputes. Nine, Using ICT systems such as electronic fiscal receipting and evidencing system, electronic fiscal devices, and the digital tracking system, tax stamps, and rental tax solution, and the telecom sector activities. Ten, continuing the outgoing integrity drive to combat corruption. Let me repeat this. Continuing the ongoing integrity drive to combat corruption and other vices essential for improving revenue collection. 11, intensifying the surveillance of wider coverage of porous borders to curb smuggling through extensive intelligence-focused operations supported by use of drones and border cameras. Strengthening regional integration and trade. Madam Speaker, 
budget consultations with our, neighbor, with our regional ministers of finance were held on 8th of and on 8th to 12th May 2023 in Arusha, Tanzania, and agreed to make some changes in the East African taxation structure. Madam Speaker, to make our industries more competitive, attract investments, and remove the remaining barriers to trade among African countries, we agreed as East African community partner states to change the taxes paid on goods coming from outside the East African uh, community as follows. One, zero percent duty levied on imports of raw materials and capital goods. Two, 10 percent duty charged on imports of intermediate goods. Three, 25 percent duty charged on imports of finished goods not readily available in the region. Four, a maximum rate of 35 percent duty charged on imports of finished goods that are available in the region. And five, small adjustments to promote import substitution and value addition of our local industries. Now I turn to public date. Madam Speaker, Uganda's public date stood at shillings 80.2 trillion, equivalent to 21.7 US dollars billion as at the end of December 2022. Of this amount, external date was shillings 47.9 trillion, equivalent to 12.9 US dollars billion, while domestic date was 33.4 trillion Uganda shillings, equivalent to US dollars 8.9 billion. Public date is projected at shillings 88.9 trillion, equivalent to 23.7 uh, US dollars billion by 30th June 2023. In nominal terms, Uganda's date to GDP is projected to drop to 48.2% this financial ending this month from 48.6 percent at the end of June 2022. The reduction is due to the government commitment to date sustainability. This is slightly below the government policy target of not more than 50 percent of GDP and also below the 52.4 threshold provided for in the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility as at the end of financial 23-24. Madam Speaker, the date service to domestic revenue is projected at 34.1% for the financial ending June, compared to 30.6% 30, 30, 30 in the previous year. The increase in date service cost was due to external commercial and domestic borrowing. This takes away, from man, takes away money from the budget which would have funded other government priorities such as health and education. Date sustainability. Madam Speaker, to maintain date sustainability, government will work to, one, ensure effective implementation of the domestic revenue mobilization strategy to boost the capacity to increase domestic revenue collection. Two, reduce expenditure in areas of lower priority in order to support fiscal consolidation. Three, Access new source of financing, including climate and green financing, leveraging private equity for infrastructure investment and scaling up public private partnerships, and leverage non traditional innovative funding structures and identifying appropriate credit enhancement mechanisms. Four, limit non concession date to high impact, high return projects, such as the standard gauge railway projects development of industrial parks, power transmission lines, water for production and tourism roads. Five, reduce domestic borrowing. Measures to deepen the date, the date market. Madam Speaker, my ministry has been working with the Bank of Uganda 
to reform the domestic capital market and make it more competitive. These reforms include rolling out of the use of a mobile, of mob, a mobile money platform for investing in government treasury bill and bonds to broaden the investor base by enabling ordinary Ugandans to participate, increase competition, and reduce the cost of borrowing. Two, finalize the framework for creating new and innovative government bonds to finance the budget, including infrastructure bond for financing infrastructure projects, green bonds for financing climate smart projects, Shukuku bonds for, integrate, for integrating development finance based on Islamic banking principles, among others. Madam Speaker, the draft bills to operationalize Islamic banking in Uganda are ready for submission to Parliament. I urge Parliament to expedite the, the, the enactment to allow the private sector to access this source of funding. Source, resource envelope for financial year 23-24. Madam Speaker, the resource envelope for financial year 23-24 amounts to shillings 52.7 trillion as detailed below. One, domestic revenue amounts to 29.7 shillings trillion of which 27.4 trillion will be tax revenue and the 2.3 trillion will be non-tax revenue. Two, domestic borrowing amounts to 3.2 trillion. Three, budget support accounts for, sorry, budget support 20, 20, no, 2.8 trillion. Four, external financing for projects amounting to shillings 8.3 trillion of which 3.0 uh, Uganda shilling trillion is from grants and shillings 5.3 trillion is from loans. Five, appropriation in aid collected by local governments amount to shillings 287 billion. Domestic debt refinancing will amount to shillings 8.4 trillion. Uh, seven, other financing shillings 222 Point zero billion. Madam Speaker, total expenditure will be 52.7 trillion. Wages and salaries will amount to 7.3 trillion. And non wage recurrent expenditure, 13.5 trillion. Government of Uganda development expenditure amounts to 6.1 trillion. And external project supporting financing is 8.3 trillion Uganda shillings. Areas worth 215.8 trillion will be, billion will be settled. Appropriation aid, shillings 287 billion have been provided for. External debt repayment amounting to shillings 2.6 trillion and interest payment of shillings 6.1 trillion will be made domestic date financing amounting to 8.4 trillion. Madam Speaker, I have attached the details of the resource envelope and other allocations for financial year 22, 22, sorry, 23, 24. I conclude. Madam Speaker, this budget is dedicated to the Ugandans who are currently not in the money economy. Let me repeat. Madam Speaker, this budget is dedicated to those Ugandans who are currently not in the money economy, to those individuals and households whose income per year is below 20 million shillings. They have now the opportunity to utilize the support that the NRM government has provided under the parish development model, the MIOGA, and other government initiatives. This budget supports taxpayers who are recovering from the after effect COVID-19. For industrialists and entrepreneurs, it improves the environment within which you are operating. It aims to lower the cost of doing business, reduce the time spent transporting goods, including agricultural produce from farm to markets. It also ensures that what you produce and manufacture is competitive in the region and the global export markets. This budget supports the transformation from a raw material-based economy to a manufacturing and knowledge-based economy. 
It therefore promotes value addition, business growth, and job creation for the youth, women, and all Ugandans. It is a budget that provides opportunity for every Ugandan to have a stake in this economy. I therefore dedicate this budget to those Ugandans who are working hard day and night to expand and modernize our economy and our country. I beg to move, Madam Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable Kasaija, Minister of Finance. Just a slight correction on resource envelope for financial year 2023-2024, and this is for our handset. Other financing is 229.0 billion, not 222. Just a slight correction. Then on the public debt stock, the public debt stock is 80.8 .8 trillion, not 80.2. That is what is on your record. So the hands are, should be corrected. Yeah. Then on the issue of the loan, the loan which Uganda inter intergovernmental fiscal transfers, mm. that is phase two. Then Uganda Secondary School Expansion Project. These loans were approved in 2021. And what is delaying the implementation is the acquisition of ownership of land. One of the conditions that was given is that the schools must give ownership. There should be evidence of ownership. So we request local government and central government to ensure that there is ownership of this land for implementation of the loan. Otherwise, we are already paying the interest. The other issue is on, uh, I had members heckle on the issue of the standard gauge railway. The standard gauge railway, a loan was passed in 2021 by parliament and was returned in 2023 after change of term of borrowing. The terms of borrowing were changed, so the loan is still with the Committee of National Economy. The standard gauge railway is not completed. Mm. The meter gauge railway. The meter gauge railway is not completed, so it is not correct that it is completed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. <coughs> Some of these statements were made in anticipation that uh, as soon as we resume Parliament, action will be taken. Because they are now being added on the, uh, the, the budget of the, of the coming year, Madam Speaker. But where the record is in, inconsistent with yours, first of all, I will apologize. But I will go and check with my team and see where the mistake is, and I will go for you that in writing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for the report. And uh, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Honorable members and distinguished guests, as I said before, that the president is attending virtually and would love to make his remarks on his budget. You know, constitutionally, the Minister of Finance is none other than the President. I now want to take this opportunity to invite His Excellency the President to make his remarks and crown the budget speech. Your Excellency, you're most welcome. Kindly address Parliament and by extension, the nation. The president. Our Excellency, Our Excellency, the Vice President, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, His Lordship, the Chief Justice, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, 
all the other leaders of the state and the party, their highnesses, the cultural leaders, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the Minister of Finance for reading the budget on my behalf. As I told you in the State of the Nation address, and as the Minister told you a little while ago, our economy will be US dollars 55.2 billion by the end of the coming financial year. This would mean that our economy will have grown by 37 times. It has increased 37 times in size compared to Uganda's economy of 1986. Therefore, we have done a good job on the three tasks. This task should be clear to all of you who get involved in, in running public affairs. Otherwise, you will make a lot of mistakes. The three tasks are what we call minimum economic recovery. That is what we set out to do in, in 1987. Minimum economic recovery, number one. Two, expansion of the sectors that had recovered, those sectors which had recovered, to expand them. And three, diversification from the original narrow, narrow, narrow spectrum of the colonial times of the three C's and three T's. You remember I have told you many times about that economy of the colonial times of the three C's and the three T's. The three C's being cotton, coffee, and copper and the teas being tobacco, tourism, and, uh, and tea. So therefore, number one, we restored that small economy which had been destroyed. That is what we called the minimum recovery. Secondly, we expanded that small, uh, small economy. That's why, for instance, you hear that coffee, which was 2 million bags, is now 9 million bags. A tea, which was 23 million kilograms in 1986, is now 60 million kilograms. So, number one, recovery. Number two, expansion. Number three, diversification from the original narrow economy of the three C's and three T's to many more commercialized products, such as what? Fish. Fish was dying of old age in Lake Victoria here. But now, we have something like, uh, at one time we had gone to 22 factories, but uh, now I think we have like 12 factories of, of fish. Maize, maize was just f for roasting on the roadside. People didn't know that, that maize was money. But now maize, in fact, they used to make a distinction between what they called cash crop and food crop. And food crop 
was supposed not to be cash crop. So maize was cash crop, uh, was food crop, not cash crop. It is now both. Bananas, milk, milk, that's how my tribe had been left out of the money economy by the colonial people. M milk was just for drinking and making the Banyankore, very fat, Banyankore women very fat. But it was not a source of money. For money, for, for, for milk of, of selling in the towns, it was coming either from abroad or from Kenya, KCC. Beef, cocoa, beans, gold, etc., all these have now been added. So therefore, clearly, minimum recovery, expansion, diversification should be clear to all of you who, who talk so much about some of these things. Those are the three tasks. But we also added a fourth task, the knowledge economy. For, for instance, automobiles, technology. When you talk of Chira, you are now talking of a new economy. You are no longer talking of just coffee and, and agriculture and hotels. You are not even talking of simple manuf manufacturing. You are talking of high knowledge, high tech manufacturing. So this is the fourth task now, the transformation, minimum recovery, expansion, diversification of what was there, but also new type of economy based on science and high technology. Example, automobiles, pharmaceuticals, vaccines, etc. This is in addition to some limited industrialization for some of the products in the areas of sugar, for instance, steel products, by recycling scrap, soap manufacture, beer, beverages, cement, etc. So apart from the high tech, we are already moving also on, the, on that really low, te low technology, value addition to our, our raw materials. And, and, and these are very important, very interesting uh, figures. This value addition, sort of uh, partial industrialization, is aimed at, at two missions. Number one, import substitution. Mulekera o Okusaka, don't import, make locally. But also export promotion. Now, apparently, when I was writing this short speech, when here in my house, when some people said I was in ICU, I think my, my ICU here is a good one because it allows me to do one or two things assisted by my comrade, Mama Janet, who is here from a distance, from a distance, as you can see, a uh, safe distance. So when, when I was writing this short speech, I, 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 I asked my people, 
and I would like uh, uh, Omgurushka Seija and his team to cross-check these figures, but because if they are true, they are very interesting. The import substitution value of these industrial products, these small, small industries of ours here, for Metaimbwa, for all these uh, Sabuni, uh, those low-tech uh, industries. Apparently, the import substitution value of these industrial products is about US dollars, 3.6 billion. I didn't know that these small factories of, of Mitayimba, steel bars, sub, uh, soap, all these, all these, our little factories, that they are saving us a figure of $3.6 billion, which we would have to look for if we are still importing them. But they are also apparently bringing into the country as export earnings US dollars 1.6 billion. Our there was uh, this Mnyankwere woman who was catching, uh, catching locusts. You know the other time when we had a problem of, of locusts, when they were threatening us, many people, many people did not know that some of the Ugandans were not happy with me because I killed the locusts quickly. But some of the Ugandans who eat the locusts, they said, this man has spoiled our food. He should have allowed us to deal with these locusts, uh, NCG. They, they, they used to catch them and, and eat them. So in the 1930s, when um, the locusts invaded us, a Mnyankwara woman went into the papyrus swamp to catch the, the NCG, the, the locusts, and she, she was carrying a child on the back. And she was so excited with, with, with catching the locusts, those papyrus plants are, sometimes can be very sharp if they, are, if they are broken. So the papyrus fragment cut the throat of the child at the back. And the woman had uh, had a warm something warm warm liquid, and she thought it was sweat. But when she finished uh, catching the locusts and stacked, eh, said, "I thought it was sweat." Bidio evereshagama. It has turned out to be blood. So me, I didn't know that the little work we were doing. I thought it was sweat. But apparently it is blood, it is something, something serious. We are saving you 3.6 billion import substitution and earning for you 1.6 billion dollars from the exports of, of, of now, no longer just coffee and so on and so on and, and these other things, but industrial products. That's really... I was very happy to, to, to get that figure. However, the big proportion of our economy is still a raw materials economy. So please, especially the NRM cadres, understand this very clearly. This economy we are saying has grown as Mr. Kaseja was saying, to 49 billion now, dollars, and it will be 55 point something billion uh, by the end of this financial year, which we have entered. You should know that that Chivaro, that estimation, is as a raw 
as mainly a raw materials economy. Economy, a child in Muktundem bid the selling the and bid the, the, the sour bananas before you process them. Meaning, and process coffee. Although I am putting your no fine spinners shut here, still much of the cotton is sold as a raw material. Maize, you can imagine we sell maize of Wempeke, maize of grains outside, and then we import animal feeds, you can imagine. Animal feeds are from mainly maize. You sell grains of, of maize, you import animal feed more expensively. And our poultry farmers are crying for, for animal feeds and the other people of the pigs and so on. And even the, the, the cattle people. Until recently, we have been importing leather from outside. You can imagine, Amaliba, skins and hides. Until recently, when I built that uh, leather factory in Kaumu, our people were importing leather from China and from India. Now, this is where, and I was hearing all of you making speeches there, but I am begging you, all the NRM cadres. This is where history demands collective and cohesive action from the NRM cadres. Now that we have got an educated workforce, because now we have got, you, you saw what uh, Mr. Kaseja was saying, that 80% of Ugandans now can read and write. You heard him saying it there. 80%, literacy rate, 80% from 43%. Are, are, are literate. Now that you have got an educated workforce, now that we have got enough electricity, now that we have got good roads, and that we are building or repairing the railway system, here in the speech I did not add, but Mr. Kaseya talked about it, we have got cheap money in UDB for industry. Every effort must be made to add value to all our products. Because this is what is lacking now. To add value to all our products. Add value to coffee. Please. Why? Because you will get money more than 10 times more when you add value to coffee than the way we are, we are selling it now. To cotton, timber, cocoa, even fish products, although the factories are producing fish, fillet, and so on, but we can add more value, apparently. Gold, we need more gold refineries. Iron ore, we don't want to sell iron ore and process to anybody. We need to sell steel, copper, vermiculite. There's a lot of vermiculite in Bugisu there. F phosphates, you can imagine we are crying that there is a war in Europe, so we can't get uh, phosphates now. We have phosphates here in, uh, in, in Tororo. Uh. The Chinese man who had come there, uh, our people stole money from him. He was stupid. He was giving bribes uh, to, to idiots and thieves. He should have helped me to get them, and, and I would have hanged them. 
but we shall get other investors. So, adding value to phosphates, petrochemicals, maize, bananas, etc., etc. By doing this, this same economy will jump to US dollars 550 billion instead of the mere 55.2 billion we are talking about laudable though it is i am happy to say oh we have gone to 55.2 billion but i'm not satisfied no and i think in the other speech which i gave on set of the nation i quoted the example of south korea and i was able to quote for you the, the economy of South Korea in 1961, I, ho I hope you can compare it with the Uganda of 1961. I think that time in, that, in the other speech I said the uh, economy of South Korea was two, two something billion. It is now almost two, two trillion. Imagine the literal South Korea has, has got a GDP half of the whole GDP of Africa, uh, of Africa, Tibaswara. Eh? South Korea is half, half size of Uganda. But they now have a GDP which is, I think, almost two trillion. And you hear that, I, I hear all these people quoting when they go to meetings. Afri African GDP is now uh, three something trillion. I really feel embarrassed. Why can't these people keep quiet? How can the whole of Africa have an economy smaller than Japan? Because Japan has got something like five trillion. Now here you are talking about the GDP of, of Africa being three trillion and you talk about it, you are not even embarrassed. Me, I'm embarrassed to talk like that. That's what I was telling the NRM MPs in Chiangkwanzi. You are talking of the oversight. Oversight, oversight, oversight. Okay, thank you very much. But is it in order to oversight backwardness? And you feel satisfied that I'm overseeing you backwardness. 39% eh? of the people who are outside the money economy, coffee, raw material, which is 100%, given away free. We are not, you should talk of transformation. Should be, you should be transformation agents. So therefore, for me, I'm insisting. Why do I say that? And I would like anybody to, 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 to challenge me uh, after this, uh, when I get out from this corona, I will be able to face anybody who wants a, a, a challenge. Why do I say this? It is because the 55... 0.2 billion you are talking about dollars we are, we are we are talking about presupposes only a quantitative expansion of our economy through creating more products yeah. you grow more coffee you grow more coffee that's how you end up you grow more maize more raw materials that's how you end up growing by six percent the one Mr. Kaseja was talking about. But if instead of just growing, uh, growing uh, uh, coffee beans, if I process a kilo of coffee from bean to powder, instead of earning $2, I earn $40. <laughs> what is that percentage now? Huh? No, 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 no. I, I'm not ready to accept that. Uh, that slave plan.
plan of slavery for Africa. My em envisioned economy of US dollars, 550 billion, acknowledges the already achieved goal of quantitative expansion, grow more coffee, grow more maize, grow more what, fantastic. But when you add value, what, what growth speed are you talking about? But adds another element, my envisioned economy of the US dollars 550 billion acknowledges the already achieved goal of quantitative expansion, but adds another element of qualitative leap through value addition. This is what I'm talking about. That is not all, however. Remember, there are still 39% of our households that are still spectators instead of being part of the players. These are the Bakorele Chida Kionka, teach me each keken, working only for the stomach. Here below is a report written for me by Major Agaba, one of our army officers, about one of our wealth creators, Nyakana of Ruengaju near Fort Porto. This army officer wrote for me wrote for me a report after she had visited there with the uh, cattle rustlers from Karamoja. These young cattle rustlers contacted me when I was in Baregi, and I met them and I, I said, okay, you, you, you think stealing cows is good? Let me show you how people who like cows do things. So I took them around to Fort Porto to different places. Now this Mejagawa went with them to Fort Porto and other places. When she came back, she wrote uh, this simple report. The farm, the Nyakana's farm, even today, I think another huge group of cattle rustlers are there. Mr. Nyakana's farm sits on one 0.25 acres and does the following economic activities. Number one, zero grazing. It has a total number of six cows, out of which five are lactating. These five cows produce 116 liters of milk per day. A liter of milk in the area ranges between shillings 1,000 and, 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 and 1,200. Earnings, he sells 100 liters per day and spends 40,000 per day on their feeding. So, that is 100 liters times 1,000 shillings, that's 100,000 shillings, minus 40,000 40, shillings expenditure. So his daily net income from cows is 60,000. This is net now. He has removed the costs. So daily 60,000, times 30 days, 1.8 million a month, times 12 months, 21.6 million from milk on one acre, 1 1.5 acres. Then his, his other enterprise was poultry, is poultry. 
He has, he has got 7,500 birds. This is the language, of course, I don't use myself. Because I don't call and coco and coco are not a nyonyi. This we are of foreigners which you you copy. A nyonyi is a nyonyi, and coco is a coco. You can't say hey, a coco is a uh, is a nyonyi. You must be mad. You, you, you can't be from Africa here. I've even had some people calling you cows animals. That uh, animals. I, I I feel like fighting. You cannot call my cows animals. They are cows. Ente is ente is ente. Enyamaishwa is enyamaishwa. So please, deal with your foreigners, but don't bring your confusion to us. But now, I, this, she's the one who wrote this. That the Nyakana has got 7,500 birds, out of which 4,500 lay eggs. He collects 120 trays of eggs per day and, and sells each tray at 12,000 shillings. Earnings, 120 trays times 12,000 is 1.44 million per day. But feeding these, uh, these, uh, these hens, what they call birds, he spends 1 million for feeding the, the hens and another 40,000 for labor costs. So out of the 1.44 minus 1 million for feeding, then minus 40,000 for labor costs, this therefore leaves him with 400,000 shillings as a daily net income from chicken. Uh. 400,000 per day, Time 30 days is 12 million in a month. 12 million times 12 months is 144 million. Net, net. This is somebody in the village. He has got net 21 million from milk and now has got net 144 million from eggs. Then he also has feeds processing mini factory. He has a feed processing plant which produces feeds for cows and chicken and pigs. He also has got manure. He produces manure for his farm and also sells out to other people at shilling 600,000 per month. Then he produces also gas production. He, he produces a lot of, of gas from his farm and has plans of packing it in cylinders for sale. So, I'm going to get uh, Major Gaba's report, put it properly in a glass cover, and put it in the Uganda Museum. Not my own speech, no, but what Agaba wrote for me. Because I want history to come and see what I've been telling you what you can do from 1.25 acres yeah. because i'm tired of talking as if i, I want you to come and uh, clean my house or, or look after my cows so I, i'll put it in the museum yeah. not my speech as a whole but but this this report by major Gower, because she she wrote it very well that's how i put it in in this speech Nyakana now employs 15 people on this 1.25 acre farm. Some time ago, I pointed out that if 7 million one acre farmers created a mere 10 jobs each, not Nyakana's 15, would create 70 million jobs more than the population of Uganda. And if you want to know that this is possible, you should find out how many, many, many Africans came from other countries and came here. Banyarwanda, Burundi, people from South Sudan, from Tanzania, 
they came because of, this, of the few economic activities which were going on during the colonial times. Coffee, cotton, mkajo, sugarcane. That's how they came. They came because the internal labor was not enough. The labor within Uganda was not enough. So these Africans from other areas had to come. So e e even now, e if we implement this, we shall have so many jobs that the Ugandans will not be enough. Therefore, no games, please. No games, no delays, no corruption, no aloofness by, by leaders and officials in the issue of value addition, and no relenting on PDM and Emioga. Uganda is unstoppable. Some people, when we tell them quietly, politely, they, they don't seem to get it. On the side of agriculture, I, I did not talk about irrigation, solar powered irrigation, because that one is very, very crucial to be able to stabilize agriculture. You had your budget, Ugandans, of Uganda shillings, 52 trillion. While I support that budget because there is no other solution in the short run, it is important to know, Honorable Kasaja talked about it, but it should be highlighted, to know that sharing 17 trillion of that budget is to pay debt. Yeah. He, he talked about it towards the end of his speech. He, he talked about it. But it should be highlighted. The 52 billion trillion you are talking about, 17 trillion of it is to pay debts. Amavanja. Many of these debts we are being pushed by the new colonial public servants until recently when I put down my foot and insisted on approving every loan. That's why you hear that these loans take time now to be approved because I insisted I must pro approve of every loan, external loan. Because all this money was not, was not worth borrowing. If you audit it, it was not borrowed for, for a good purpose. The way forward is that we should borrow less, and I'm glad the minister talked about that, or not borrow at all. With the discipline, we do not have to borrow at all. URA is also still under collecting taxes. Those URA people, I saw Mr. Singh there in the, in the TV there, but they are also not doing a good work. Their tax GDP ratio of 13% is not serious. In Europe, countries like Holland, our tax GDP ratio of 39.7%. However, we say in our language here, ekitata muhima techimala konte. When a cattle keeper still has life, he will get new cows, even if the old ones died. We shall learn from the mistakes of the past and perform better. Now, what I want the NRM cadres to understand is that in order to do the industrialization I talked about, we don't have to use government money. The government money has already been used on the basics, infrastructure, security, and so on. The, the strategy is to handle well the private sector. Private sector can help us industrialize our country, 
provided we handled them well. I want to thank all the Ugandans who have been praying for me. I've been watching you praying for me at the, the National Chairman's Office, Babaranda and Hadija Muzukuru, praying in uh, All Saints Church, praying and uh, signing the board here near the gate, and all the others who have been wishing me good luck. I, 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 I appreciate really. Uh, it's good to know that I, I am not as bad as some people try to make me, and that there are Ugandans who appreciate. I, I also want to, to congratulate our people in Bukedea. What uh, Right Honorable Speaker spoke about, I, I was following our guard there, a call was elected as chairperson uh, with the big majority after the death of the other cha of the chairman, who was also NRM. I congratulate all those who are involved. I congratulate uh, uh, Right Honorable Anita Mong because she was, uh, sh she helped us a lot. It's not illegal for speaker to, to have a clan. Is it in the constitution that a speaker must have no clan, include, including a political clan? So the, the, if, if it's not unconstitutional, then I want to, to salute her. And the, the NRM people who stood down, because there were NRM people who stood down for, for our call. So I thank you, and I wish everybody good luck. Next time when I, when I come on the TV, I, I will talk about Corona, because now I am an expert, and I'm also a veteran of, of, of Corona. So you count me among the veterans. Thank you very much. Following the budget speech and crowning it, I want to reiterate our commitment as legislature that we will do our work as enshrined in the constitution and mindful of the money economy. We'll do what all it takes, but mindful of the money economy and we'll always ensure that there is value for money. We will not allow anything else but value for money for us to increase money in the economy. Thank you so much for us to be able to get what we want. Thank you. Adjournment. I want once again thank the President of the Republic of Uganda and all the dignitaries that were invited and have attended this very special function. In a very special way, I want to thank Mama Janet Museveni for taking good care of our president. We want to thank you so much, and we keep praying for you and the family, and we wish our president a very fast recovery. We want you out there to do work for this country. We are adjourning the house to Tuesday at 2. PM 20th June 2023. The anthems.
members, all of you are invited to the poolside, Serena, for an evening. So, uh, a good evening to all of you. My name is Timothy Nyangos, and this is UBC. Even as we get to the end of this national budget reading, 2023-2024, a lot has been said. The president was here just a few minutes. He addressed a few things about uh, import substitution and also spoke a lot about, you know what, this oversight role, what does it get us unless we get out of this poverty? He also gave an example of a gentleman called Agaba and gave us an example of what he does with 1.5 acres but also with poetry there, with poetry, uh, excuse me there, but also we looked at uh, 